Hey, everybody. It is Jamie from the School of Creative Magic, and it's been a long time since I've been here with a kind of behind the scenes. And last week, I did a video about the Spring Studio Yearbook, which is out now. And uh, I have to say, I came back to YouTube and I went through my comments. I haven't been here for a while, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But I went through the comments and I felt such a sense of connection. I felt such gratitude. I remembered why I love being here. And I thought, okay, let's see. Let's see about coming back. And I'm going to take it a day at a time. And I'm going to trust my instincts. Uh, last time I tried coming back with like, a new creative living with Jamie and I have this big vision for it, but I don't have the resources right now to make that go. And so it was kind of like, yeah, uh. <laughs> and that felt bad. That felt bad. That felt bad. And so I'm going to go back to my original thinking, which was all about just showing up and trusting what is and being free and being real and sharing with you what it is to live your life as a studio, you know, to experiment, to be brave, to be vulnerable, to risk, to create, to laugh and have joy and wonder and to live your life as an artist and treat that life as your studio. And so I think I'm going to let go of getting it right or being fancy. We all know I like a little bit of fancy <laughs> uh, and just be here. So here I am. And first, let me share with you like the, the powerhouse of a thing that's happening in my own creative life, which is I'm currently enrolled in a program to become a DJ and to learn embodied leadership. And I, it's so exciting and it's incredibly intense, like two classes a week, plus additional bonus classes, plus homework, plus reading, plus making mixes, plus discovering music, plus reviewing it. Like it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff, but a lot. And the reason I'm doing this is because for those of you who've been around for a long time, you know how I feel about dancing. Dancing is the alpha and omega of creating for me in my own creative life. Shannon, my sister, calls it your home art. Like the one that's always with you, has always been with you, has always called you. And over the course of the pandemic, I spent several years dancing with Tasha Blank, who's teaching this program. And we did that on Zoom. She was at the time a New York City DJ, all the clubs... And so she was like, okay, I'm going to take this baby online. And I'm so thrilled she did because I was able to benefit from taking those classes, from moving my body and dancing around this studio with a group of people around the world. And it was such a joy. And I thought, this is something that would be so great for my community. Because one of the things that makes me really sad, especially for those of us who are sort of like past the time in our life when we might consider clubbing. Well, where do you dance? Like, where do you dance? You can take classes where you're learning, but where do you just like, yeah, like, yeah, weddings. <laughs> and I would notice that every time I went to a wedding, it's like all the women, all the women would find their way to the dance floor because there was this ache, this yearning, this desire, like, this is my chance to dance. And I want to give us more chances. I want to give us chances to remember what it's like to live in this body and that this body actually loves to move and groove. And so I'm going through this whole program so that I can bring more dancing to people like you. And I hope that's exciting for you. And I hope it's something that you'll consider joining me for when I am ready to share. And here's something I'm not really ready to share, but it's also true. I guess over the course of the pandemic, I kept working. 
Um, I, and I was so thankful to spend time with those of you who are especially in Mindful Mondays. The, the course I had about starting your week off with meditation and with reflection and with planning a week that was true to your dreams and your heart and what you most imagined would fill you up. And it was so powerful. I'm feeling a little emotional about it, but it was so powerful to come together with a group every Monday and continue to be hopeful, to have a sense of connection and continue to move your life in the direction of your dreams. And that was deeply meaningful to me. Um, over those couple of years and before, I would say, you know, it's funny, my, my dad passed away. Well, that's not funny in any way. But in 2022, my dad passed away in December and he had spent a year fighting truly fighting cancer. His desire, his deep desire in his heart was to spend every day, like one more day, one more day, one more day with his family and loved ones. And when he passed away, I can look back on my life sort of between the period of time when my mom passed away and when my dad passed away. And one of the biggest struggles for me during that time period was acknowledging getting older and acknowledging the changes that were happening in my life and my body and my face. And I remember, to, I'm older than many of my friends, and I remember talking to them about it and saying, it is the weirdest thing to look in the mirror and see someone different than I've seen for a very long time. I found it hard. I found it dysregulating. I found it, uh, and I feel, and then I also found it embarrassing that I found it hard. I thought like, Jamie, how uncool of you. <laughs> like, but that was the truth. That was the truth. And so we went through the pandemic. I went through the loss of my father. And I was struggling with getting older and with seeing myself, like having a vision of myself as an older woman. Who would I be? Who would I be? Who did I want to be? And all of that led to me kind of getting a little insular. Like I took all my energy and I pulled it inwards. I used it for my classes so that I could be there to support those women in Mindful Mondays, those artists of devotion. So I took my energy and I focused it intensely on that. I went through the healing and connecting and learning experience of spending the last year with my dad and then becoming a person who has no elders, no direct elders in my family, uh, and then facing what it means to me to get older. And so that was hard. And I was far less public during that time. Now, I used that time one, like I said, to focus on myself, my life, my, my second adolescence, because that's really what it feels like. All the discomfort and transformation, all the ickiness, all the muck, all the body stuff, all the hormones, all of that. It is for sure your second adolescent. So I was struggling with that. My personal life, my relationships, my family, my history, who I am as a grown woman without her parents. What does that mean? And focusing on my students and my classes. I also, during that time, birthed the idea of the school for creative magic. I went to I went deep into study. I'm a Sagittarian after all. People don't talk enough about the fact that that's one of the things we do. I went deep into study about 
creativity and magic in business. And that birthed this idea of taking all like my body of work, which I've been, I've been doing this work for 20 years now. Like that's the flip side of, of feeling uncomfortable with aging is in order to really own my experience, my expertise, my years of working with creative spirits, with artists, with highly sensitive creatives, of helping them create a life and pursue their dreams and express themselves and feel good about the way their spirit is expressed in the world. I've been doing that for a long time. I love it. And I've made a difference and I've learned a lot and I have a lot to share. And that rides on this place of I've lived a life. I've lived a life, a beautiful, rich, sometimes difficult, um, creative life. And so those pieces started to come together. And then I am a person with creative fire. I have things I want to make. <laughs> I have ideas that come in that want to be translated into a something and then shared in the world. And I am committed to that. That's that's my love, my life, my purpose, my passion, my the way my soul, Jamie, wants to be expressed in the world. And it always has been is to live life, take something from it, be inspired by it, turn it into a something, a class, a business, a painting, a, a DJ set, and then go here. <laughs> and in order to do that, I have to, I think there's something for me about trusting coming back into the world, being here, sharing with you, um, continuing to age and grow and develop and learn and live my life as a studio. And to, to trust that letting you in that there's some goodness there for you and for me. That there's um, something, something nourishing, something, I, and I don't have to know what it is. I don't have to know. Maybe you know how you're receiving this and maybe it speaks to you and maybe it doesn't. And that has to be okay. One of the things I teach in my devotion program, part of the whole point of that intensive artist program is for artists to build a very strong relationship to their creative impulses and to pursue those purely, right? Like to have your own instincts and trust them and pursue them and make them. And you may decide to share them or you may not decide to share them. It's, either is fine because the first relationship is between you and that creativity. And so I am trusting that, that there was something in me that needed the time away. I created the foundations for some magical, wonderful things, including the School of Creative Magic. And now with my embodied leadership and DJ training. So I had to lay some foundations that took a lot of energy. I needed to do some personal work, some healing to be with my family and to use my energy where it was most potent. And now I'm feeling a little call to expansion and I'm just going to have to trust, like, just thinking of that adolescence, like my wobbly new cult legs, <laughs> that I will take next steps as they make sense. You know, I have spent a career being very 
devoted to my work and very regular. Like when I was really in doing the podcast, you knew that podcast would come out every week and it did for years and years and years. And part of what the reason I always felt that was really important is it's important to me to create a sense of safety as, as much as we can, right? To create a sense of trust. And that can really help. And also, it's too early for me in this new stage of my work, this new stage of my life, it's too early to do this. I'm still in the figuring it out stage. <laughs> Though there's a lot that I know. School of Creative Magic, love it. Studio Yearbook is the beginning. It is the entry. It is the simple, easily accessible journaling practice to connect you to your creativity, to the seasons to your rhythm, to your dreams. And then this year I'm teaching a year long program where we're kind of taking that out like off the books and into life. And we are creating together and we are sharing reading hours together and we are dreaming under the full moon. And I'm teaching lessons every month on things that will support people's creative practice. And that's what people are working on during this whole year is developing practices that will support a year of creative magic this year and next year forever years and then devotion which is this three-month intensive for artists to really connect with who they are as an artist claim that identity once and for all and to really learn how to listen to their own inspiration and create from their own intentions and build a really unshakable relationship between them and their art. And now I'm adding this dance piece. I'm going to bring that back in as soon as I'm able. So my vision is clear. And all of that energy that's been building, 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 is like that part is... That part is almost done, including my own foundations, my own healing, my own being with me. And now we're getting ready. It's just, we're just at spring, right? Now we're like those little sprouts, that young colt starting to look around and go, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I am maybe ready to be in this world and to share the truth of right now, to be here with you and to trust there's goodness in that. I know there is. So I'm so glad to have shared this time with you today. I hope you enjoyed spending this time with me. Remember your life is your studio and you are an artist. I'll see you next time.